Hot take coming in, ooh. Actually, I don't even know if this is a hot take. This is kind of my observation. Solo didn't do too well, fans are pissed. I see videos being made, I see tweets being made. There's a lot to say, tell, and digest about the current state of Star Wars right now. And this is just my take, my observations on it, which I feel like is gonna piss off half of you, and I am sorry for that in advance. But there's just a lot to talk about here. Because the fans are speaking, the fans are kind of turning on Star Wars right now. I mean, you shouldn't phrase it that way. Fans who love Star Wars still love Star Wars, just they're gonna, pick and choose certain elements of Star Wars that they like, ostracize the rest. That's where it's going right now, and I haven't seen that since, well, since the prequels came out. But there wasn't social media around when the prequels came out, so it just seems like more now. But trust me, it's, it's the same thing. And don't take this as fact or law. Don't take it as scripture. It's certainly, it's, it's not heavily researched. These are just my opinions, my observations on what I'm seeing. And I assume if you're subscribed to my channel, you come here for my opinion. So here we go. Fact is, in the current state of things, Star Wars isn't what it once was. Whether or not you think that's a good thing or a bad thing, that's up to you. But it definitely is a different kind of paradigm. The Star Wars movie about the most beloved space smuggler captain ever, that includes Malcolm Reynolds, yes, opened to what, $85 million or something like that? Under a hundred million for a Star Wars movie that's pretty disappointing. And there are a number of people who are blaming Solo coming out so close to Deadpool 2 and Infinity War, that's why. Maybe that plays into it to a degree. I don't think that's the whole reason why. And even if it is the reason why, it doesn't change the fact that it's a Star Wars movie. Like if this movie had come out 10 years ago or five years ago, when lined up with back-to-back, -back, one weekend has Avengers Infinity War, the next weekend has Deadpool 2, the next weekend has Solo a Star Wars story, I feel like Deadpool 2 would be the one that took a hit. I'd be like, I want to see what happens with Avengers because it's 10 years leading up to it. And a Han Solo movie, yeah. Or maybe not. Maybe people just never wanted this thing. i just never seen a time when a Star Wars movie wasn't the gravitational force dictating how much money other movies are going to lose. Like, it should have been Solo is dictating where Deadpool goes and how much money Deadpool's not going to make because Solo came out so close to it. I never thought I would see the day when that Star Wars movie didn't make as much money because it came out so close to Deadpool? This is kind of shocking to me. And I feel like the disappointing solo numbers and the fan backlash, one comes from the fact that Yes, you've heard it a lot. And I'll say it again here, fans never really wanted to see a Han Solo movie. When you know everything about someone, when you have all the secrets, you're like, all right, well now I know. On to other things. Generally speaking, you can always make a backstory to something. We can make a backstory to the Han Solo backstory. Find out how he got on Corellia. So why not make a new hope the Han Solo backstory? That works. But I also think the fan backlash is now that we are four movies into the Disney Star Wars movies, I'll call them that, fans are starting to see how this saga lines up with the other Star Wars movies, how it's different, and how it's very different. And I believe they're starting to get pissed because of the promises made versus the promises kept or rather promises broken. When Kathleen Kennedy was sitting down with George Lucas and they were announcing it, George Lucas was like, I'm going to sell it to Kathleen Kennedy and Disney. She said, The main thing is to protect these characters. Make sure that they still continue to, to live in the way that you created them. At no point there does it sound like most of the characters you love from the original trilogy are going to be dead by episode nine. They are dead, they are gone, and they went out like punks for the most part. I mean, there's a rumor that Lando might be in episode nine. I don't want him in episode nine. Not because I don't love Lando, but because I don't want another character to die. As long as Lando is not in these new movies, I know he is out there somewhere, probably running Bespin, maybe he's doing fun missions, but he's alive. Right when he comes on screen, I'm gonna go, mm. <laughs> and the old crew being killed off to make way for the new crew doesn't sound like the merger we were told it was. It essentially sounds like a hostile takeover, which is how a lot of people are interpreting these movies. Let the past die. Kill it if you have to. Oh, great. Fuck you too. And we've always been told the core Star Wars movies, it's the saga of the Skywalkers. How can it be the saga of the Skywalkers when there is one living Skywalker left whose last name is Solo, which is a bullshit last name, who will probably die by the end? Fact is, the focal point of all of this is essentially The Last Jedi. I mean, with The Force Awakens, people were like, yeah, I mean, it, it used the same beats as before, but Star Wars feels like it might be back. Or rather, that was some people. Other people like me were like, Star Wars is back. That was an exciting time. Last Jedi was like, fuck oh my Star gosh, Wars, I'm so done awesome. with Star Wars, no more Star, Star Wars, Wars ever. It's not just what they did with Luke, which was take that galaxy's greatest optimist who faced down with the Emperor because he believed he could turn his father good, which he did, and you turn him into the old grumpy uncle you don't want to come to the barbecue? That sucks. But it's really the smallest scale of any Star Wars movie. It has plot points that are useless, they literally go nowhere. The movie's essentially the slowest chase scene ever between the Resistance and the First Order. It has modern day jokes, your mama jokes, 
cell phone jokes, and it has social issue commentary, which solo Star Wars story in the droid, it hammers that home. And it takes the escapism out of Star Wars. I'll touch on that more in a bit, but when I first saw The Last Jedi, I had that feeling, a feeling I'd never had in a Star Wars movie before, where I felt like I was watching characters not from a galaxy far, far away, but from our own galaxy. And our own solar system. Our own planet. From the intro, the way Poe was talking to Hux, I was like, that's... That's from our world. That had never happened in a Star Wars movie before. It's a bit too on the nose. And as much as I'm saying The Last Jedi has divided the fan base, a divided fan base and or an angry fan base is nothing new to Star Wars. Just worth addressing because these new Star Wars movies were supposed to bring it all back. That's not new to Star Wars. It feels new because social media is just what it is. It's enormous. That's how we get most of our interaction, but it's not new. If you really feel like that is new, that means you were on the, what I'll call, right side of Star Wars history when the prequels came out. It means you probably hated the prequels, and you said midichlorians were an abomination and Jar Jar Binks was horrendous. But when the prequels came out, if you were out there going, you know, midichlorians were a great idea and Jar Jar Binks was hilarious, then you knew right then and there that angry fan backlash, all the venom and ire that we see right now, it was around back then. I mean, look at Jake Lloyd. He burned all of his Star Wars toys, all his Star Wars paraphernalia, and he said his school life was a living hell because of Star Wars. And it was because of Star Wars fans to him. Myself included, I've said things that weren't so nice about his performance. I feel bad about it. Cause it's easy to forget that they're human beings. Or just look at the maker of Star Wars himself, George Lucas, in an interview, he said, why would I make any more when everybody yells at you all the time and says what a terrible person you are? The guy didn't want to make any more because fans were mean. People like me, we were so mean to him, he quit. I <laughs> so yeah, so it's always been around. And some movies should be divisive. That's actually a lot of fun. Mother is one of my favorite movies that came out the year it came out because people either loved it or hate it and I just enjoyed the conversations about it. But when you're holding one of the greatest, most beloved cinematic franchises in the palm of your hand, maybe don't use it to do that little social experiment. Maybe try to unite people under the flag of loving it. But it took risks. Yeah, fucking your wife's friend is a risk. It doesn't make it good. But really, if you look at the marketing, the setup, up the, the cinematic universe they're building. They are making a Star Wars cinematic universe. They're essentially treating Star Wars like Marvel, but Star Wars is not like the MCU. Star Wars was never like the MCU. Not all things are created equal. That is a phrase for a reason. I was actually talking with someone about the chronology. It used to be we got a Star Wars trilogy comprised of three movies that were separated by three years each. And we got that treatment twice with 16 years separating the end of one trilogy and the beginning of another. Now in the course of two and a half years, we have gotten four Star Wars movies. That's just bafflingly fast for Star Wars. But Star Wars never thrived as a franchise of just pumping out content for the big screen. It thrived by being the slow crawl. You had three years in between movies. It built the anticipation among fans. After that first year, you didn't really think about it. Then the next year, you saw the marketing material start to come. The chatter was coming through. Then you started getting trailers. Just my memory of the prequels coming out like that. Even though I have my problems with the prequels, the memory of it, the camaraderie among my friends and I, us talking about, ooh, what's happening next? That's a lot of fun. And it spans so many years. Star Wars has always thrived by being a focused saga. A saga that the filmmaker knew what the beginning point, middle point, and end point was going to be. Star Wars now just feels kind of like a clusterfuck. We have these different filmmakers. One doesn't know what the next one's doing. I mean, do you really mean to tell me? Ryan Johnson did what J.J. Abrams would have done had Abrams directed The Last Jedi? No, he didn't. They're just on different pages. It just makes the whole experience seem unfocused. Like you have a drunk behind the wheel and never drink and drive. Another complaint I see is people say Star Wars is too political, which I take to be social issues. And the new movies do have some heavy-handed social issues, but they're not woven into the plot. I mean, you can argue, and George Lucas, I believe, has actually said that Palpatine is George Bush. So you can argue the prequels and the rise to power is what Lucas felt the Bush administration might do. Point is, it's woven among the entire plot. It's not these one-liners characters say. It's not L3 from Solo, A Star Wars Story, sounding like she's reading hot take tweets on social issues. It's not like that. Honestly, I always felt Star Wars was pretty agnostic when it came to social issues and social justice. I always kind of felt it was there. It's like, all right, here's the galaxy far, far away. Here's the fun space opera with space wizards. Have fun. I mean, it always had familiarity with our world, sure. Lucas even said, you have to make it familiar enough for the fans to latch on to it, but still make it otherworldly. Like, it can't look like this world. And sometimes these new movies, they feel like our world. It doesn't feel like a galaxy far, far away, so it feels different. Whether it be a lion or a scene at Canto Bight, it's like, yeah, uh, I read about that on Twitter, and that's why it's in here. In my observation, I feel like the talk of Twitter 
literally dictates what is made for the big screen. And Star Wars is no longer separate from that. The problem with Disney Star Wars and how they convey these social messages is how much they just stand out from the rest of the plot and dialogue. If it's a line they speak, there's always this pause and just comes across as awkward. If it's a plot point that's supposed to be a metaphor or a mirror on our world, it's a useless one. It never actually melds, merges, and flows how I think they want it to. I mean, I think we all agree that social issues are worth talking about and social change needs to happen. I think it's great that it is happening. But haven't we all been in that scenario, like where we're hanging out with friends and we just want to hang out with friends? We're not on Twitter because we don't want to see the good fight right now. We just want to relax. We want to talk about the good times. We want to have some enjoyment. But then there's that person that one of your friends brought that keeps swinging the conversation back into that direction. Like, dude, there might be a new Fallout game at E3. Oh my gosh. Yeah, speaking of Fallout, there's going to be a lot of Fallout for that Donald Trump tweet. I'm telling you, this is the year. Well, yeah, probably. Um, or how about this one? Dude, in Doom, I just got this awesome gun. Dude, it was- Gun, huh? Yeah, in Doom. It was a really cool gun. You kicked a lot of ass. I see. So, what, what, do you play as a teacher in Doom? Are you arming the teachers now? What? What are you talking about? Let, let, let me ask you this. How many doors were there in the building? Did it make a difference? I- We just kind of want to talk and play video games right now. It just comes across as awkward. I mean, we've been there, right? It's just, it's all in context. You gotta feel out the room. I'm not even saying Star Wars shouldn't be the platform. Maybe it should. It's not the 80s anymore. I mean, what these movies have to do is not make it so heavy handed. You have to essentially trick the audience. If you're gonna have something that's going to be a metaphor for real world shit, you have to have it woven into the plot in such a slick way where when they're watching the news later, the person who watched your movie's like, oh man, that kind of reminds me, oh. Oh wow, that was a metaphor for that. I totally get it now. That's the point of doing that. Having it so heavy handed in the dialogue, having it stick out like a sore thumb because it is a bad plot line that goes nowhere in your movie, I think is not only the least effective way to do it, it puts people off to it, it turns people off to it, to people who would otherwise be receptive. I mean, I would think putting social or political issues in your movie, you do to reach the people who otherwise wouldn't be on the same page as you. I think Disney needs to pause and ask themselves, why do they do it? Do they do it to speak to the people who already have their mindset so they can all just go, yeah, totally. Or do they do it to speak to people who otherwise would not have their mindset to try to show them the other perspective so they can go, oh, that's an interesting perspective. I didn't think about that. And that's a question for Disney, really. But I think the second scenario of reaching people who otherwise wouldn't be on your mindset is a more worthy cause. At least it'll do something, at least it has an effect. Otherwise, it's just an echo chamber of people who already agree, and what good is that? But because Disney's execution on the matter is not cloaked in any form of nuance, I have to assume it's them doing the first thing. Them forming an echo chamber, speaking to the people who already agree with them. It reminds me of those people on Facebook who unfriend everybody who doesn't agree with them politically. Then they give political posts, but you're not... You're not spreading a message, you're just talking to people who already agree with you. Just maybe Star Wars is not the escape. Maybe it's not meant to be. It's, it's 2018 now. Movies are different. Your movie going experience will be different. I suppose if you want Star Wars with less social justice commentary, you have the original trilogy, go enjoy it. I mean, really, if you look at Star Wars in the past, the metaphors and the parables they had in there, they were generally things people could see as metaphors for our world. Palpatine, the fall of the Republic, the rise of the Empire, being George Lucas's metaphor for the Bush administration is the most on the nose thing. But it's different because it transcends that. You could take that back to Julius Caesar, really any fall of a Republican rise of an empire. That's happened a lot. There's a cautionary tale of it could happen again. And that cautionary tale is still applicable now and will still be applicable in the future. Essentially, the theme is applicable to us, but also timeless. It will always be applicable. I feel like what Disney is doing in putting these social issues and political issues in their movies is it's issues that are monetizable and hashtagable now, which locks Star Wars into now. Years down the road, film schools will look back at that time when Twitter had a big hand in what got made and presented on the big screen. And the Star Wars movies were movies that took part in that, of that time. Essentially make Star Wars feel smaller. And in the end, they'll be like, but is the Republic gonna fall and are we going to become an empire? That's still a very applicable message. Now, all that being said, the question is, does it matter? And that's the question for you to ask yourself. Here's my take. I mean, in the end, this is the important thing to remember. Star Wars is just a movie. And if a movie can illustrate something that can better the lives of real people, I feel like that's a worthy thing to do. People are what life is about, not movies. I know, shocking that a movie reviewer says that, but it's true. So Disney, I think your heart is in the right place, just your head's up your ass. It's about how you address it, because if you address it so heavy-handed on the nose, it's gonna turn people off to it. People who would otherwise get the message and appreciate the message, because it was woven into a good plot, didn't stand out like a sore thumb. I think in the end, if Disney changes their tactics, I think people who just want the escapist fun 
fun of Star Wars and people who want to see the issues addressed in Star Wars can both get what they want, but it's all about execution. And I hope you don't see this as me flipping my perspective on Star Wars. I was super jacked when The Force Awakens came out. I've been super jacked for the last couple years, but it's just life is life. And here is a big fundamental thing about life. You get new data, you process that new data, and then your mindset kind of changes. And I've had a couple years to process these new Star Wars movies. It's just what I see. I get the feeling if I'm jumping to a conclusion, and I might be, reviewers out there will review a movie or view a movie a certain way. And if the perception on it changes, they're not allowed to say it. They have to, above all other things, stand by and defend their initial outlook on the movie. I just, life's too short for that shit. Fuck that. You get new data all the time. You process that new data, come to a different conclusion, different outlook. I'm gonna blow your mind right now. Any and every movie reviewer out there that you watch has changed their mind about a multitude of movies. But they can't say it, so they don't. Have fun with that truth. But I essentially did this to start a conversation. So, the current state of Star Wars, what do you see? What do you think about it? Do you think it could get better? Do you think it's just fine right now? Whatever you think, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, click right here to see more.